what type of church we're in today. It's Friday. I know I done worked all week. Came to church. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I can see somebody lifting up some hands. Hallelujah. I had to check myself wondering where I was at. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I praise God for being here today. We want to extend a welcome. Most of you, we all know. But we're here to praise the Lord. Yeah. We're here to give God to give God praise. Yeah. It doesn't matter who's here. I'm here. Yeah. You're here. Yeah. And God's here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And that's enough. And so if you came tonight, give God the praise. Yeah. Give him some glory. Yeah. Not me. Give him some glory. Hallelujah. Give him some praise. Yeah. Give him some honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to welcome our special guest here. Pastor and First Lady Arilla for just uh, being uh, in worship with us in our 37th convention service. We're so glad they're here and that they're here to worship with us. So we want to uh, encourage them to relax. You're at home. We love you. We're safe and sanctified. So we're just a part of your extended family. So feel, feel free. Hallelujah to praise God and everyone that is here. We are home. We are family. Hallelujah. Let's just have some church. Amen. Let's have church. I'm going to have church, but I'm just saying I want you to join me. So if you will, let's have church. Sanchez will be having church, but let's have church. God bless you. Hallelujah. And I like that. Let's have church. Hallelujah. All right. So I don't know what you come to do. Hallelujah. Amen. But I come to praise the Lord. I come to lift my hands. I come to stop my feet. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to have a response. We're going to call on First Lady. Uh, Arilla from the Word of Truth Tabernacle. Amen. All the way from Indianapolis, Indiana. Amen. Let's proceed her at this time. Yeah. 
old time way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days yeah, yeah. and some sleepless nights. But when I look around and I think it's over.
Don't say I'm having a bad day because you had a flat tire or because the refrigerator stopped working or because you got sick. That doesn't mean you're having a bad day. But this is the day. Look at your neighbor and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I won't complain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for first day of love. Wonderful selection. Hallelujah. Remembering and complaining. And we've got to learn that. Amen. Whenever, you know what encourages me? Whenever I think about how hard it may get, I look back at Jesus. I look about I look at how he carried the cross for me. How he got beat down for me. Amen. Uh, chastisement of my peace was upon him and with his stripes I'm healed and that Jesus went before a lamb that's dumb, he opened not his mouth some things we just gotta go through because it's in our cup but we know one day, amen we don't want, there won't be any more testing trials no more having to fast, no more having to come to church, it'll be alright when I see Jesus amen, hallelujah we come here to the 37th convention and I, I really want to thank the Lord for Pastor Alan Arilla who graciously accepted the invitation to be able to come and be with us uh, many times at the council I don't know I guess it just sort of ends up that way we sort of end up lining up next to each other <laughs> in the council and uh, I thank the Lord for, for brethren in the gospel amen this is his first time being here at the King's Chapel Assembly. We want the Lord to use him. We want, amen, uh, just to, uh, I'd like to say, let, let your hair down, Pastor, and let the Lord have his way. Amen. You're at home tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand tonight as we get ready to receive the speaker. Pastor Alan Arilla, he grew up in Grace Apostolic Church since the age of five years old. He got saved at the age of 18, and he was saved from the entrapment of the streets, saved from the prize-fighting world in which he fought for 25 years. Amen. Hallelujah. His pastor was the late Bishop Morris Golder, uh, and he's married to the late Elder Cecil Golder Sr., Amen. which is the daughter that sang, amen, his wife, amen, this evening. We thank the Lord, amen, for this dynamic team that has come. And we want you to sit attentively as he brings the word of God, preaching to us. Bible said, how can they hear except they be sent? Amen? And how can they be sent? You know, how can they hear except they be sent? And how beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel of peace. So we thank the Lord. Let's put our hands together tonight. Pastor Allen, Arilla, amen. All the way from here now to us. Amen. Let's receive him by saying, preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word, Pastor Arilla. Preach the word. Preach the word. In Jesus' name. God bless you, my brother. Put your hands together for us. Hallelujah. While you're standing, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I come to say thank you, Lord, for our safety arriving. For protecting us from danger seen and unseen. I thank you, Lord God, for permeating the atmosphere with your presence. Now, Lord God, as I always say, at home as well as here now, I take my seat and let you take over. I humble myself before you, Lord God. I submit my total being to you, Lord God, to be used of your will. Oh, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for your anointing. Yes. Lord, let us saturate through me, Lord, from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Yes. Yes. Use me, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you. Bless this service tonight, Lord God. Bless this church, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord God. Yes. I, thank you. <laughs> I fear you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may see the presence of the Lord. I say praise the Lord again, saints of the Most High God. Give an honor to God who is the head of my life, who directs me, who orders my step, who wakes me up 
in the early morning hours moves me to get on my knees and pray to him. When I'm so tired and I just want to lay there, but he moves me to get up. Sacrifice. I want to talk to you. There's a word I want to plant in your soul. Hallelujah. I thank God and I love him tonight. And to the angel of this house, my friend, Pastor Juan Sanchez, a very humble brother. And we have something in common. He is of Hispanic descent, and so am I. I told him that at the council. We have that in common. And to the first lady, Sanchez, God bless you tonight. And to uh, 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 my good friend, son of Bishop Hobart Greg, and his lovely wife. There's a uh, story behind, I don't know if you down here in Fort Wayne know about it, but my late father in law, the late Elder Cecil Everett Golder Sr., told me about it. You see, years ago, when his lovely wife was going to uh, 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 the Grace Apostolic Church on Northwestern which is what this building reminds me of. It come because that old, old, old Grace was a brick building on Northwestern. All right. And she came home and told him about this little short preacher who was my pastor, the late Bishop Mars Ellis Golder. Right. And he heard him on the radio and he said, that can't be your preacher. All right. yeah. That can't be no preacher. He talks too elegant. Yeah. He, he talks too elegant. Yeah, now that can't be him. His words are, are, are too good. All right. All right. So he went down there to see for himself. Yes. All right. And he said that uh, that man was preaching on his life is like he had told him himself. Yes. And he said when he got through preaching, my father-in-law, my wife's father, got up to make altar call and sing that song, Come on me on the Lord, son. Yes. And he said he, he was trying to hold on his seat and he kept on and nesting it on his feet got up and he went down there and, and I think it was the, uh, uh, the late uh, the late Deacon Clemens that baptized him in the back and he got the Holy Ghost that night. Uh, see my my late father-in-law and my pastor and my uh, my, my late Aunt Rose were a team. You know, uh, 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 Bishop Golden preached. My father-in-law uh, did everything else and my Aunt Rose played. We, and they were a team. And my wife and I are a team. Yeah. I preach and she sings. Yeah. And I thank God for my woman of purpose there. Yeah. My lovely wife and word of truth time night, we say praise the Lord. You know, uh, uh, that's something else that Pastor Sanchez and I have in common. Yeah. You know, my wife sings and his wife plays. Yeah. Yeah. My wife wants to play. She, 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 keeps, she keeps on me right now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take piano lessons. Yes. Later. You don't got too old now. You know? <laughs> it's too late now. <laughs> you see, when, you see when, when age comes on, uh, you, you kind of lose your patience on some things. <laughs> well, Lord. <laughs> but you don't know what Christmas may bring. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Nevertheless, it's good to be in the house of God tonight. I, I, I thank God. I thank God for my, my late pastor. I cannot feel his shoes, but he always told us in uh, uh, the Minister Alliance meetings that I don't want you to uh, feel my shoes, but I want you to stand on my shoulders because I want you to excel more than what I did. You know, so uh, uh, nobody could ever feel the late Bishop Mars Ellis go to shoes, but we can stand on his shoulders and see a little bit further off. So I, I thank God for his teachings. I thank God for his chastising me when, when, when I didn't want to do right, when I still wanted to fight in that ring. And, 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 and still wanted to, and I could hear those words in my mind just if he said it yesterday. What you do is not a sin per se, but sense can't do everything and be silent. Right. Right. That's exactly the way he told me. Yeah. Yeah. And he was right. He was right. So I, I thank God for uh, 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 my, late, uh, uh, my late pastor. 
And it's because of him who laid the foundation in my life. Uh, I'm going to stick with your theme. I believe in sticking with the theme. Uh, 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 so if you would uh, get your hands on the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians. I will be reading from verse 11 down to verse 16. Someone does not have a Bible next to you. Please share your Bible with them. And I don't know if it's your custom here, but uh, if you would stand in the honoring of reading God's word, if you are able to stand. And when you have it, just talk back to the preacher and say, I had it. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth may be no more children, hallelujah, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men Hallelujah. and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part yes. make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love yes. Hallelujah. coming from the homiletic verse till we all come in the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God. You may be seated. I would like to use for a, a topic tonight a call to oneness. A call to oneness. You must understand that the book of Ephesians, it parallels with the book of Joshua. Mm -hmm. You must understand that the Old Testament is the things contained. The New Testament are the things explained. All right. All right. The Old Testament is the shadow. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the New Testament is the body. Yeah. <laughs> The Old Testament are things concealed, but the New Testaments are things revealed. You see, Joshua deals with Israel entering the spiritual rest and the blessings of Canaan. But Paul tells us in Ephesians that we were chosen in him. Hallelujah. Chosen in him yes, to receive all spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings. In him before the foundations of the world. Uh -huh. And Paul also tells us not to harden our heart. Right. That's right. that we too may enter in into our rest. Yes. I'm looking for that day. Yes. All of Paul's letters contain a beautiful balance between doctrine and duty. 
The first three chapters deal with doctrine, right. our riches in Christ. Mm -hmm. While the last three chapters explain duty mm -hmm. and our responsibility in Christ. But the key word here is in the last half of the book, and that word is walk. All right. yes. We must walk right. Right. in the responsibilities you, in Christ. Oh, yes. Paul starts off this fourth chapter using the word beseech. Yes. The word beseech indicates that God in his love urges us to live for his glory. Yes, yes, glory. Mm -hmm. In verse 11 now, he tells us the first apostles were, were commissioned immediately by Christ. If you read the Gospels, you'll see where Christ chose them and commissioned them immediately. They were thus commissioned of heaven mm -hmm. to preach the gospel. Yes. Yes. They just did not do that on their own. Right. They were commissioned from heaven and authorized oh, and they ordained others. Yes. Yes. Christ gave pastors and teachers not only the authority to preach his gospel uh -huh. but to train up and prepare holy men for the same work. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, the apostles, the prophets, mm -hmm. the evangelists, they link church to church and serve the entire body. Yes. The pastors and teachers had charge of local and congregational affairs. Yes. Yes. The apostles with the prophets were the founders of the church. Yes. Their distinctive function ceased. When the foundation was laid and the deposit of revealed truth was complete. Can I preach like a prayer? You see, we're living in a time now where everybody wants a title. Everybody wants to be called this. They want to be called that. But it gets on my last nerve and if I'm out of order, just pull my coattail and I will apologize, Pastor. But it gets on my last nerve when people call themselves apostles. All right, yes. All right, yes. There is no such thing as apostles in these times. Yes. You can be the work of an apostle. Uh -huh. But calling yourself apostle. Well, well, how do you mean that, sir? Well, the Bible gives us the credentials to be an apostle. You have to be an eyewitness of the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Now, if you today were back then, I want you to tell me that. Uh -huh. But those are the credentials that make you an apostle to see the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. They ate with him. They talked to him. Uh -huh. They laid their head down with him. Well, you might say, well, what about the Apostle Paul? Well, I got some Bible for you there. The Apostle Paul seen Jesus in his glorified self on the road to Damascus. Nobody heard him but Paul himself. Well, well, he didn't see that he wasn't taught by Jesus. Well, I beg to differ with you there. Because it says in the book of Galatians that God took Paul back on the backside of the Arabian Desert for three years to talk. And when he went down to Jerusalem to meet the rest of the apostles, he knew just as much or more than they did. This Bible tells you that. But Paul was a humble man. He says, I'm the least of the apostles. Uh -huh. But yeah, we're living in different times now. Where are your credentials? Uh -huh. Where are uh, your authorization papers? Uh -huh. When did see Jesus death when did you see Jesus resurrection I'm gonna get off of that now but I have a problem with that but you see 
the apostles their distinctive function cease. When the foundation was laid and the deposit of revealed truth was complete. The evangelist and pastoral calling that still remain. And out of them have sprung up all the variety of Christian ministries today. Since that was exercised. Pastors and teachers following their train. Tending the engathered sheep. And laboring to make each flock that they shepherd. And every single man perfect in Christ. Mm -hmm. Then he, Paul tells us in verse 12, he says, uh, Christ's gifts of great and good men in every age have been bestowed for a thoroughly practical purpose. The perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, the edifying of the body of Christ. Uh, you must understand, church, that no one man has all the gifts required for the full development of God's church. Uh, nobody has every gift. Uh, uh, but you see, but it is the privilege and honor of each worker to use uh, his special gifts uh, for the general good of the body of Christ. Uh, I don't care how puffed up you get uh, or how big your head is. Nobody has all the gifts. Uh, nobody can do everything. We need everybody to make this thing work. Uh, you know, I preach it now. But you see now, the church must be built up. Uh, and this can only be done by the harmonious use uh, of the gifts of Christ. Uh, not by mere human expedience. Uh, we may have eloquent preaching uh, in this world now. Uh, we might have crowded churches in the mega world. Uh, we might have magnificent music in the church now. Uh, and we might have all the superficial appearance of, of great religious movement uh, which the revival was only a poor galvanized thing. Uh, it's only a corpse twitching with a strange mimic cry of life uh, but possess none of his vital energy and power. Uh, you must understand church that gifts uh, are dangerous without the grace and wisdom to use them. Uh, that's why you have homosexuals uh, creeping in the church playing the organs now. That's why you have lesbians creeping in the church singing in the choir now. They're misusing God's gifts. So gifts are dangerous without the grace and wisdom to use them. Gifts are not toys to play with, but they are tools to build the ministry with. And are not used in love church. They become weapons to fight with. Yeah. You must understand that's why we have so much trouble in the church today. I can sing better than she can. Why is she leading all the songs? I can direct the choir better than he can. Why is he directing all the songs? I can play better than Sister Sanchez can. Why is she on the organ every Sunday? But you see, these gifts must be used in the right order. These gifts must be used for the edifying of the house of God. Nobody has everything. One person may sing. Another may play. Another may be on the drums. Another may have the gift to direct. Another may have the gift to preach. Another may have the gift of the deacon. Another may have the gift of the administration. Another may have the gift of usher. And another may have the gift to do janitorial work. But no one man has everything. We all got to work together and come in the unity. Oh, I feel like preaching now. Oh, but Paul tells us in verse 13 now. He says, to we all of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. You must understand church that faith must be based on knowledge. A faith so called not based on knowledge is fantasism. True faith is the result of conviction. A profound profound consciousness of the truth. Let me just put this on pause for a second. Back home at Word of Truth I started the eighth 
a week series uh, on growing in faith. Uh, the Lord stopped me on this after the sixth week, uh, but he told me to get back on it next week or the week after next. Uh, but you see, it's something about growing in faith. Yeah. Oh, some people didn't like it uh, because they didn't want to accept it. Uh, but there comes a time in a man and woman's life uh, that kindergarten's faith is not going to do it anymore. Uh, there comes a time in a saint of God's life uh, that first, second, and third grade is not going to do it anymore. Uh, that's all right when you first get saved. Uh, can I make it plain tonight with a feel like preaching? Uh, you see, I told them the word of truth. Uh, God give us uh, all the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, everybody gets all of them, uh, and we all get the same fruit of the Spirit, but not the same gifts of the Spirit. But the fruits of the Spirit, you know what they are. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. And the others that go along with it. You see, there comes a time in a child of God's life where God said, I've got to remove my joy from you. And I've got to let you experience my suffering. So that you can grow in faith. So you can find out where you are in your faith. You see, we always say in testimony service, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Then we get an indignant with it. We'll magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. But the Lord said, oh, I hear you talking. Can we Will you really still bless me when I remove my joy out of your life? When I take away the sunshine and let the storm and the rain come? Oh, will you still bless me when I start letting your body feel pain everywhere? Lord, enough teaching. I feel like preaching now. Will you still bless me when your husband falls off and loses his job? Me. Oh, hallelujah, right on time, Cinderella. Oh, just stay on your carriage there, and let's go for a ride. You see, we need to go fight some demons now. But you see, sometimes God removes this joy, and he removes this peace, and let us experience his cross. And I know their cross gets heavy sometimes, but you just got to take you back down that old carrying his cross. Uh, that cross got heavy and he stumbled and fell. Uh, oh, and they whipped him when he was down. Uh, but he got back up and put the cross right back on. Uh, see, when trouble comes your way, uh, it might not feel good. Uh, you might shed some tears. Uh, you might be sick some days. Uh, but get back off of your knees uh, and put the cross right back on your shoulders. Uh, and carry Christ suffered. 
That's when you can say, I know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. That's when you can say, you are my daddy and I am your son. That's when you can say, I've got a closer walk with Jesus. That's when you can say, he's holding my hand. That's when you can say, I told him the other day at 
the uh, Greater Mount Calvary. Uh, when I was coming out of Matthew 28, 19. Uh, Go ye therefore, uh, preach and baptize in the name of the Father, uh, in the name of the Son, uh, in the name of the Holy Ghost. But uh, well, that's not hard to figure out. Uh, it's just name, uh, not names. It's not proof. Uh, it's just name. Uh, what is the name of the Father? Uh, his name is Jesus. Uh, what is the name of the Son? Uh, his name is Jesus. Uh, what is the name of the Holy Ghost? Uh, his name is Jesus. Uh, he is the Father in creation. Uh, he is the Son in redemption. Uh, he came back in the Holy Ghost. Uh, the circumcised our heart. Uh, and the dwell in the heart. Uh, and his name is says in Matthew. Uh, the name shall be called Emmanuel. Uh, God interpret God with us. Uh, She was looking up me and on the internet. 
internet. You don't know what them guys, she was dating them men. She was getting herself in trouble. Next thing you know, she's lying on the first lady. But next thing you know, she stopped coming to church. You see, that's what happened when you're tossed to and fro. Oh, you're going with every wind of doctrine. But I just stand to tell you today that when the storm gets rough and the wind start blowing and the waves start coming in the ship, hold your ground. Don't you move. But stand steadfast on the one that's doctrine. Stand steadfast on Jesus. Don't you move. Don't you run. But stand steadfast. Come in the unity. Hallelujah. Come in the unity of oneness. Bless you. in Jesus' name tonight. Anybody wants prayer tonight? We want to let you know, amen, that you can come and receive prayer. Thank God. Let's give God a hand of praise for Pastor Ray again tonight. Hallelujah. I want you to think about tonight the diamond standard of how much God so loved us. He didn't send one son after another son, but God sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him oh, yes. Oh, yes. should not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus died one time today. You want to open this call up today to the altar if anybody wants to come and worship right now. I love what he said about building one another up. Amen. This is what it's about. Amen. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. We need one another. Amen. Husbands need wives, and wives need husbands. Amen. Parents need children. Yes. Children need parents. Amen? Amen? Let's lift our hands and worship the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Tonight, whatever you have need of, sometimes, you know, we don't even know in the spirit what to pray about. But God has placed us in the body of Him. In that 17th chapter of the book of St. John, Jesus said, I pray, Father, that they all might be one. Amen. I and them and them and me. And Father, you and me. And that the world might believe their message. And tonight, we want the world to know today that there is but one Lord, one faith and one baptism. And there's one body today. The souls have come into here no matter what past life they've been. Such were some of us. But aren't you so glad that the Lord picked you up? Look at this. We all went down in Jesus' name. The Bible says they all did eat the same spiritual meat. They all drank the same spiritual drink. Amen? They all passed through one Red Sea. Hallelujah. They all were delivered out of the hand of Pharaoh. And today, it doesn't matter what, we, what our past was. Doesn't matter if we were in gangs or smoking and drinking, whatever sin we did, and all of us were sinners. But God saved us by His grace. Hallelujah. Delivered us out of the hand of the enemy that He might bring us into a new and a living way. He's placed us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Let's lift our hands up tonight as we worship the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.